Hey there, Steve here, hope you're doing well. A few years ago, I tried to recreate Yvette Young's style guitar tone in a video. And while I got fairly close, there was something that was always bothering me, something that was missing from the equation. And it wasn't until I got this guitar that it finally clicked what it was. And no, it's not what you're thinking. So today, I wanna to have another go at recreating Yvette Young's style tone for you. And we're going to do it this time without using expensive guitars, amps, and using a pedal board filled with expensive pedals. And at the end of the video, I'll show you a crucial component that's needed to tie the sound and feel all together. Right then, so the current approach is based around Covet's latest album, Catharsis, which in my opinion has some of the best effects pedal use I've heard on a record in quite a long time. I'll be using this along with the latest Premier Rig guitar rundown of Yvette Young's setup, a wonderful video. And lastly, my own knowledge over the years of listening to Covet and just following Yvette Young in general, with the aim to get into the ballpark of her sound and feel and not go 100% into all of those little details because we'll end up driving ourselves crazy. I transcribed a good chunk of the song Bronco from this record, so we can use that as some kind of reference. And I'll make that tab available to patrons just to give back and say thank you very much. Right, onto the gear that you'll need. I'll be using the Nuex MG30, not sponsored by them. I just picked this up so we can have something that's quite affordable and relatable. And hopefully you can use something similar to set up this core sound. You could also go full on using computer amp sim software and you could use effects there too to get the same kind of sound. And keeping in with that affordable theme, all you need for this one is a guitar that has a single coil pickup and we're gonna put that in the neck position. I will be using if it's YY20 signature and not because I'm going to get the sound of that album because I know on the record that she used predominantly the Strat style configuration and um, the reason that is I just wanted to show you even with a Tele style single chord pickup in the neck we can achieve a similar tone and lastly there's that one thing that I hinted at in the introduction that ties the sound of feel all together but I want to get to that at the end because I really want to get through that core sound and then add that cherry on the top so to speak at the end of the video for you. This is the new X patch editor on my computer and I'll walk you through through setting up the bass sound. If you're a fan of Yvette like myself, you know that she's a big fan of the Vox AC30. And to be honest, pretty much every modeler out there is going to have some version of this amplifier, so we should be pretty safe there. And I noticed after watching these rig rundown videos and obsessing over every single detail that she has an amp set up where it's just slightly driven, and that's what I've set up here. But it's sounding rather dry, so we can move on to the next part of this setting up this bass sound, and that's looking at giving it some space, and we're going to do that by using reverb. Um, if you if you know already, um, if you're familiar, Yvette loves the Mercury 7 pedal by Meris. Favorite reverb, the Mercury 7. This is a plate star reverb. I've owned this pedal in the past, and I had it for a long time. An absolutely fantastic pedal, and I wish I'd never sold it to buy something else, but maybe I'll get another one in the future. Luckily, on this model of software, I have got this plate reverb pedal, but you can achieve a similar sound by using any reverb really. We just want to keep it quite subtle. Moving on, next thing I noticed, this is way before I even watched any of those Premier Guitar rig rundowns, just looking on the internet and the ether of people sharing information about her rig, was that she was a big fan of the Warden Compressor by Earthquaker Devices. And we learned later on that she sets this more of like a, a preamp pedal by using the sustain on that pedal. The sustain knob I feel like really affects my tone. I've earned that pedal three times, I'm quite embarrassed to say, um, but to me it's not really a great compressor for what I want it to do, um, but it's absolutely fantastic for the way that she uses it, like more like a preamp, just driving that signal and it's got a bit of limiting on there too. I don't have that pedal here, but you can do this with most compressors anyway. And if we go over here, I've set up a Healy style compressor just to drive the signal a bit more. So here's with it out. <laughs> And now we have arrived at what I call Ivit Young bass tone and we're going to layer on top of this. So well done, you've made it this far. I suggest having a cup of tea and a biscuit as a reward. So now we'll transition into looking at some of the other effects that she uses. We'll start by looking at one of the most um, noticeable sounds that you hear on this record and previous records is her use of chorus. On her board she has the Juliana or Julia by um, Warus Audio which is kind of set around a Boss CE2 pedal I do believe, could be wrong about that, but when you're setting up the chorus pedal I notice she has quite a lot of depth, but the rate is a bit lower. Mm -hmm. 
Moving on, we can then start to look at gaining the signal a bit more using overdrives. And on her, her, on her latest board, she uses the Beatronics uh, Fat B, I think it's called, as like a, an overdrive pedal. And on this, there are a number of overdrives that we can use, and I settled on this one, getting the most accurate tone. So you'll have to have a play through your um, pedals. I'm not sure what type of overdrive the Fat B is, to be honest, but it makes it sound fat, <laughs> hence the name. And this is the kind of tone I got. And um, it suits that Bronco sound ever so well. <laughs> And then I noticed in the rig rundown, they ask about like, what's the highest kind of overdrive sound? And I did set up a patch for that. I just copied and pasted this one. Uh, if we go over to number two, I just put the distortion plus to get as close as possible to that sound. <laughs> into some of the delays that she uses. She's got quite a few on the board and she makes use of these on the album. You can hear them throughout. And it's wonderful just in that video just to see a few examples of them being used and the songs that they're used in. One of the most common delays that she's had for a long time is the MXR carbon copy. And I just realized as I was making this video, I've also owned this pet, bought and sold this pedal three times. Maybe I have some kind of problem. The MXR is an analog style delay which has like darker repeats. And I noticed on the record and I saw this on the rig rundown, she has quite the mix dialed in quite high on the delay. Other delay pedals that she uses are like a tape style delay which I can't really recreate on here it doesn't do it so well but it has that um, like so it's like more of a rhythmic by choosing the different style heads on the tape one. So can't really make recreate those ones here, but what we have arrived at is 99% of the effects that we could use for that album. So you must be still on the edge of your seat, I hope, <laughs> wondering about, well, what was the realization I had when I got this guitar that led me to actually work out, well, what was the thing that tied this feel and sound all together? And what that was is when I picked this guitar out of the box, picked it up and played a few covert wrists, I realized, oh, it's the string gauge. She uses 11s, and for someone who was using nines at the time, recently, which the 10s, but that's irrelevant. I was like, these feel so much thicker, felt so much more um, springy and harder to play. And when I plugged it in and went to like a Vox kind of setting amp, then I realized, okay, it's got a lot more like low end response to it as well. It sounds like this thick kind of soupy kind of sound. Well, I thought, well, maybe I could just turn up the bass on lower gauge strings. I had a go at that and it didn't really get the same kind of um, harmonic mixture let's say. So I persevered and stayed with the 11s and that's what made me upgrade to the 10s by the way. You get the feel and you get the sound of that. And so much so for this video I actually went and put 9s back on this and I recorded the same riff using 9s and 11 gauge strings just to give you that comparison. And while it is subtle you will notice with the thicker gauge of strings that it's got low more low end response. It sounds more rounded. Basically it sounds more like the Yvette tone that we hear on the records and when you hear her live sound as well. Well, I hope anyway, I'll let you be the judge. the basics of getting Yvette Young style tone on more of an affordable budget. The next thing you might be thinking, well, how can I dial in my rig to get kind of a mathy emo style guitar tone? And in this video, I'll walk you through how you can exactly do that. Thanks for watching and see you again soon. Goodbye.